accident at the corner of Leslie and York Mills is now cleared, and traffic is moving well in those two lanes. No problems up on the expressway, and that's about it, I guess. Well, folks, it looks like it's going to be another wonderful day. I kind of like to keep it that way, so no matter what you plan on doing, just take it easy. down on the traffic situation. Bob will be back in another 10 minutes with more information. Meanwhile, the music to charm the battle. Let's get you over to a seat. What's that? What did you say? What has happened? You fell down. Are you a nurse or something? Does anyone see what happened? I saw him go down. Looks like he had a heart attack, lady. He's sitting on a bench over there a little while ago. If you ask me, I think he's been drinking. When he falls down, did he hit his head? Oh, no, no, he fell on his knees. I, I can't smell any drink on him, can you? What's he say? He has pain. Much pain. I don't think he's drunk, man. Look at his face. Could be a fit, I suppose. To put something between his teeth. That's what they told us down the Red Cross. It's a heart attack, lady. I'm wanting an ambulance called. Do you have a telephone? Please tell them to hurry. <laughs> Dr. Wojcik. 
That's you, Steve? Don't state the obvious, Arnie. Look, it's my hospital day, and I'm in a hurry. Now, what do you want? Steve, you are treading on toes again. The grapevine has it that you're going to ask for an investigation of the food regulations. Examination is the term I use. All right. An examination. I'm not being coy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve, before you go racing ahead, I'd like to talk it over with you. Marty, I haven't got time now. Look, if you want to talk with me, uh, meet me at... Marco's at 1 o'clock for lunch, okay? All right. Marco's. Right? All right, goodbye. Bye, Steve. What was that all about? Another little flutter in the dovecote that Mr. Arnold Bateman works in. I gotta go, goodbye. Trouble? Oh, nothing. A little uh, change in legislation wouldn't correct. What about our date? What are you talking about? We had a date for lunch, remember? Oh, I remember. Oh, boy, one of these days. Listen, now, uh, what time did you go down? Well, the auction starts at 11.30. Lunch. Set for 1920. Very desirable. But they're so ugly. I happen to like them. You have an overactive gland. I'll see you at once. It's a date. Steve? Yeah? Can I have oysters? What do you want oysters for? My gland. looking at a rig from this angle. Well, we're here for this morning, aren't we? Yeah, well, some of us have to work for a living. Oh, come on, regular hours. A day with the wife every night, you've got a maid. <laughs> sure, regular. Patching up when you guys wreck. Yeah. Well, you run a lot better when you leave them alone. Well, how are you gonna hang around? I don't know. That's Charlie. He's got all the answers. <laughs> Danger money. Of course, you wouldn't know anything about that. Ah, don't make me laugh. I was hauling rods before you were born. Yeah, that, that must have been when you met that old broad who keeps asking about you. Yeah, I'll send her my paycheck. Hiya, boys. Hey, can either of you tell us stand a fellow driver to a beer? I've been out of work for six months. Can't get nothing. Shove off. I had 11 years with Crossland before they laid me off. How come? Well, it's my eyes, pal. They, they sort of go fuzzy. Hey, yeah. Uh, Hey, you know Stan East over at Crossland? Sure, sure, I know Stan. Me and him gone for beers. You're a liar. Stan's our time. All right, made a mistake. Here, catch. Thanks, pal. You're a gentleman. Hey, uh, you wouldn't have a couple of them. All right. All right, I was, I was just asking. What do you encourage him for? You feed the old guy, you ain't gonna let that jerk put the plate on you. But I supported you all these years with another two bits. You get more money than the welfare state. It's called charity, Edward. You never get the home. Don't forget to get a wife to look after. And the rent. Don't forget the rent. That's little enough when you're the landlord. Yeah, when I got it, we're moving out, remember? <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm looking forward to a little peace and quiet. Yeah. We'll have a couple of beers before you go. You're on. Hey, you know what? what? I've been thinking. Well, now that we're moving out, we'll have room to put up that old rod. And then she won't have to ask about you anymore. Hey, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Tell him I got a job, will you? Yeah, right. Well, tell him that you slept at his place last night as well. You're sure this is all there was? That's all he had with him when he came in. And you say he has vomit? In the ambulance, I understand. Any idea where Dr. Wojak is now? I should think he's probably doing his ward. Give him another minute or two and then call Dr. Felton. I'll be in back. Very well, Doctor. Dr. Scott would like to see you, Doctor. He's in there. Blake's anatomy? Almost as gory. Steve, I've got a problem. Professional? Yes. You get a hold of Rogers, he's a sad man. Yeah, he's also after my scalp. 
Steve, there's an old man in number six. He collapsed at the old fort. They brought him in a little over an hour ago. When I examined him, he had profuse skin action. Complained of nausea, abdominal cramps, distorted vision. Pulse and respiration were poor. And he vomited in the ambulance on the way here. You run the routine tests? I followed standard procedure. What was your diagnosis? I suspect botulism. Good Lord. How'd you arrive at that? Well, I've ruled out diphtheria and polio. Was methyl alcohol poisoning? Mm, that too. What kind of a history did you get? As far as we know, the only thing he's eaten in the past 14 hours is a sandwich. This is the remains of it. It was given to him by a truck driver. Smoke of us. Mm -hmm. Well, how did he feel this morning when he got up? All right. He spent the night in the Salvation Army Hostel. Had he been drinking? He says he hasn't. Are his eyes sensitive to light? Very. Well, what is his present condition? Poor. He's an old man with no constitution. Well, if it is botulism, he'll be dead in 72 hours. You want me to have a look at him? I'd appreciate your opinion. All right, Alan. You better get that done in the lab right away. Thanks, Steve. Nurse, get me Dr. Carter, please. I don't know his number. Emergency reception here. I'd like to speak to Dr. Carter, please. Dr. Carter, this is Scott in emergency. I'm sending you up a sample of meat for testing. I'd like you to give it priority. We're specifically looking for the presence of Bacillus botulinus. Yes, I know. I'll send it up immediately. Thank you, Doc. Now send this up to the lab right away and tell the orderly to keep his fingers off it. What do you think, Steve? I think you're right. I'm going to contact the medical officer of health right away. What about the administrator? I'll look after that. And the truck driver? We better get the police under that. So far, he's our only lead with the source of contamination. Sorry, I've got you involved, Steve. We haven't much time, have we? Don't you just hate guys who phone up and ask you who you think you are after they've gone and dialed the wrong number? But what if he does think he's calling a point to It's not your fault he made a mistake, is it? So if I dialed the wrong number, why don't you answer? Crazy. You all set, Tony? OK, here's another big one.
It's your diagnosis I'm backing, Steve. Well, I agree with Scott. Yeah, I know. But last week he diagnosed a ruptured bladder. Turned out to be a soft muscle spasm. And you don't think we should have contacted the MOH? <laughs> well, I just hope we're not being premature. Come in. Dr. Andrews? Here. Dr. I'm Inspector Charles. Oh. Please. This is Sergeant Luck. They can't sit down, Inspector. Thank you. Oh, you know Dr. Wojcik. Coroner and I have met, sir. Well, gentlemen, I suppose you know why you're here. No, sir, we don't. The MOH didn't explain, but I uh, understand the matter's urgent. Steve, will you fill them in? We have an old man in emergency. His condition is critical. We think it's food poisoning. It's probable he became ill as a result of eating a sandwich given to him by a truck driver. The immediate problem is to find that driver. We're hoping you can help us. Though I understand you're not sure the food was contaminated, Doctor. We're running tests right now, Inspector. The trouble is we won't get any results for a couple of hours. But in this case, time is a prime factor. Food poisoning is pretty common, isn't it? Not this kind. This kind? It's called botulism. It's one of the most toxic substances there is. Seventy percent of the victims die within three days. So I guess the first thing we have to do is to try to find the driver. He may have eaten some of the stuff, too. Well, we'll just have to find him there, won't we? Can you? We'll do our best. Did you get any description of this driver? No. The old man said he was young. He drove a green tractor. Any idea what make of truck? No. What time was he with him? Well, we think about 7 o'clock in the morning at the fort near the, uh, the railway yard. He gave us a lot of ground to cover. Anything else that might help, Doctor? Well, he said he was out collecting bottles, and the man who gave him the sandwich uh, gave him two empty bottles. A needle in a haystack, isn't it? Sure is. Doc, you get down to the rail yard, dig up any information you can. I'll stay here and keep our lines of control open. I'll let you know if anything happens here. Very good, sir. Well, I guess I'd better get back to the factory. Carter will have the lab report soon. Find him, Inspector. Well, is there anything I can do? I'd uh, like to talk to your switchboard if I may. Dial nine. All right. This is a police emergency. <laughs> What happened? It's Mrs. Pelchard. She's taken ill. Nancy found her in the washroom. Doris? She was all right an hour ago. I fetched a coffee. Well, what's the matter with it? Look, give us the back of the LT and call me when you get to the hospital. Like, what about her mother? You leave that to me. I'll tell her what's happened. Nancy thinks Doris is pregnant. <laughs> Must be a miracle. Her husband walked out a year ago. Gladys, you don't think she's having a miscarriage? We'll find out. Figure you earned it. Oh, come on. Now let's have a slug, huh? Thanks. You know what? You know what I got? I got me a stinking gut ache. Well, you better get some food in before you slug liquor, pal. I eat. Same place I got this. Now, would you like this, Georgie? What's it to you? Someday, somebody's gonna work you over, Georgie. It don't seem to be bothering you none. They're gonna work you over with a boot, Georgie. Yeah, give me that. Hey, you know what? I got a solid job on Grandy. You wanna come? But for a couple of stinking bucks. Yeah, we could make us ten. Kill us. It's a burn of my guts. Hey, you're a gentleman, Georgie. Hey, Georgie. What's wrong? Right. Let's go. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. 
fuck you're doing? Fell down. Get him off the track. They fell down. Get him over there. You hit him with that bottle? Hit him? What are you talking about? Our caboose this morning, would you? Not us, pal. I mean, we're just having a couple of slugs over there. Yeah, well, somebody swiped a bottle of hooch out of there, blew on to some guy, and somebody went through my lunchbox and got my sandwiches. What do you want from me, huh? What do you want? Georgie's sick. We gotta get help. Oh, come on, Henry. My wife says that oysters are poisonous in Ethan and June. Maybe one of the oysters of yours, anyway. What about those articles you've been writing for the World Post? What about them? Well, all those loopholes in the food laws, is that right? Don't concern yourself, Henry. Just get well and get out of here. Uh, they say some butchers are selling meat that's unfit for human consumption. The authorities say it can't happen again. How long did they do it before they got caught? And how can we be sure that they won't do it again? You may have to become a vegetarian. With all those sprays? Uh, Henry, get your clothes on. Go out in the hall and chase a few nurses. It'll give you an appetite. Doctor! Doctor, I'm not satisfied. Dr. Yep. This gentleman would like a word with you, Doctor. My name is Smythe, Doctor. Herbert Smythe. I know you must be busy, but I was wondering if you could spare me a few moments, Doctor. As good am I. Oh, I'm from the Board of Health. Uh, food inspection. I'm keeping a sort of watching brief over this food poisoning case. You talked to the, um, to the administrator? Yes, I am Dr. Scott, but I was hoping that you could give me a little more information. In what respect? Well, I understand that uh, you also examined the patient. My diagnosis concurred with uh, Dr. Scott's. Uh, but you have no confirmation from the lab yet. You could be wrong. It's a possibility. Uh, we'll know when the lab reports come in. And if it is botulism? Then God help him. My department has a certain stake in uh, matters referring to uh, food poisoning. Yes, we're trying to locate the uh, source of contamination. Yes, I know, but there is another aspect to this matter. Mm -hmm. All the clean food articles you've been writing for the World Post have been giving us a pretty rough time, you know. Mm. Well, my comments related to the situation, not to individuals. But you don't get the whole picture, don't you? Did you realize what effect a food scare would have over the convention period? At the moment, I'm more concerned with the, with the public welfare. And in particular, the man who may be dying. Now, what is it you want to say? Well, I'm asking you to handle this case with discretion. Uh, if the lab confirms botulism, let's not go out of our way to make it a public issue. What exactly do you mean? I mean, there would be no point in trying to frighten people. What they don't know can't hurt them. Is that what your department thinks? I'm expressing a personal opinion. But then I suggest you contact the medical office of health. Or should I mention it to him? I understand that there are some people getting concerned about your attitude, Doctor, that uh, there's even talk of making changes in the coroner's office. Oh, really? Merely an expression of concern for your welfare, Doctor. Now, if we can only get this whole thing to work out. Hello, city editor. My name is Lowther. Well, I have some information on the food poisoning situation. Somebody here at Central Hospital He's dying of it, and the food examiner wants the coroner to keep it quiet. Dr. Andrews' office. Wait till he hears this. Scott here, sir. We've got another one. Yes. A woman named Polchuk. Same stuff again. She got it from a mobile coffee vendor. You know what kind of truck it was? A blue one. You know the driver? A blue truck calls regularly at the storage company. Yes. I know. I'm wondering how many more we're going to get. Can't you narrow it down any more than that? All GH trucks are green. I've sent out seven. What time were they out? First one, 5.40. How many from 6 o'clock on? Three. They all loaded here? Those three did. You might check lower down by the way platform. Some could have gone from there. Is that an accident, Charlie? No. These guys are looking for a GH, Ed. You seem to think it's one of ours. Uh, what's the trouble, Sarge? Food poisoning. We're trying to locate a driver. You've been around here all morning? Yeah, since five. What did he look like? No idea. He gave some sandwiches to an old man. That's Dave. Owen? 
Yeah, yeah, I saw him. An old guy in a bum. Dave gave him a pack of sandwiches. Hold it. Who's Dave? David Owens. He's a GH driver. What's your name? Levers. Hmm. Full name? Edward Levers. Dave lives at my place. What time was this, Levers? Seven. Car 47. Check out his registration number. B three nine three one one. Bound for North Bay. Right. Sergeant. Hold it a minute. What is it, Turner? Call from control. There's another poison case. Woman named Polchak. Got the stuff from a coffee truck at the storage room. They want us to check it out. You got a coffee vendor that calls here? Yeah, the guy's name is uh, Ernie Brown. See, so that's where Dave got a sandwich. Where can we find him? Uh, these guys get all over. He'll be back this afternoon. Call us if you see him. Sure. I'll put the word out. Then let us know about Dave, will you? What? Let's get over to the storage company. 4-7 to control. Come in, 4-7. The man we want has been identified as David Owen. Driving GH, repeat, George Harry Rig, number Ontario B39311. Believed northbound on Highway 400. Destination North Bay. Request OPP detail and report. Over. Check 47. Terminal employees confirm Owens got food from mobile vendor named Ernie Brown. Suggest contact Metro License. Over. Complying, 4-7. Out. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thanks. Wait, you get back again. You make it sound as though Steve was selling state secrets. Come on, Marty, you're not listening. You know, when the press quotes Steve, does. they always say, according to the city coroner. I'm simply advising uh, a less indiscreet approach. You mean through the normal channels? <coughs> Why not? Have you ever tried them? Plug for years. Hello, Mr. Dunn, that's it. Bombo, Mitch. Hello, Mr. Thank you very much. There's no use advocating these radical overnight changes. These things take time. That costs money. Well, now, don't you give me that line of... Marty, would you like me to carry that one for you? Yes, Thank that you. One. You know, this uh, public support you think you've got will fall flat on its face at the mere mention of a tax increase. But haven't you read the article? Yes, I have read the article. You've got to get the government to re-examine the food regulations. The health department is fully aware of its responsibility to the public. They're overloaded and undermanned. Marty, come here. Have a look at that. What about you know how many inspectors we have? 27. I like mine better. Well, that is not the point. Of course it is. What do you expect with America? Well, I can squimp on the groceries. You know, the crime rate is not necessarily related to the police force. Touche. Arnie, not a mile from here in that I've seen men shovel off up a stinking floor directly into the cookies. And they are supposed to conform to the regulations that are laid down. That's baloney. Same as the restaurant with the filthy washrooms. Circular waitress. Steve! Aren't you laying it on a bit thick? Do you know how many restaurants were closed by the MOH, the medical officer of health? No. <laughs> Last year, nine. Good. That shows that the inspectors were doing their stuff. Did any of those filthy people lose their licenses? I shouldn't have had those oysters. This is ridiculous. I mean, there, there are more men spending more time enforcing liquor regulations than there are in, in the food inspection department. Look, I can only repeat. If you've got evidence that the food regulations are inadequate, then give them to the legislators and let them work it out. I mean, let them sit on it until they can use it. <sighs> Boy, the iron's really got in you. What's the matter with you today? Arnie, today in the hospital, there's a suspected case of botulism. Botulism? It's a highly toxic form of food poison. Does it have any permanent effect? They usually die. A 
Well, you eat too much and it's beginning to show. Listen, take the kid home, okay? I gotta get back to the hospital. Yeah, um, sure. This, um, suspected botulism. Is it an isolated case? What's the matter, Art? Are you beginning to wonder what goes, what goes on behind those kitchen doors? Arnie, yeah. do you have a peppermint? Well, no, but I got a lightsaber. That'll do. Sure. You hold the lamp. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye. You ever get the feeling you're not wanted? Sure. When I get into bed with the wife after a night shift. <laughs> I mean, this shift is dead. Suits me fine. You get an old part. You wait till the next public holiday. You'll have all the excitement you can have. Maybe I should move in with the boys downtown and help them sort out some of that organized crime. <laughs> you don't know when you're well off. Well, take our pension, for instance. Now, a now hold it, Frank. Check your board. Isn't this the rig we were told to keep an eye out for? The food poisoning case. You're right. Do I call him? No, we'll check him out first. soon have you out of this. I had the horn going, but nobody stopped. You're all right now. Just try and relax. I got a pain in the gut. I couldn't keep her up the road. Let's get him in the car. Move in another unit. Check out Dockside Road west of Maine to the Lakeside Intersection. That's correct. Thank you, Central. Standing by. There's a medical officer of health. He's concerned at the delay. Well, I've moved another unit onto the waterfront. It's only a matter of time now. Is there nothing else you can do? Losing faith in well, it, it isn't a qu question of faith, Inspector. It's just... Ah, oh, Steve. Well, what's I'll come in and join the wake. What's happening? We have two more cases brought in here. And our lab report on this meat sample confirms botulism. That's an epidemic. You made a connection? They all ate the same stuff. Came from a mobile coffee vendor. A man by the name of Ernest Brown? Yeah. What about it, Inspector? Well, we've been scouring the area. So far, only negative reports. Yeah. What about Mrs. Polchuk and Dryden? Well, let me know. Yes, I'll be here. The old man died a few minutes ago. We have a mobile killer on our hands. He's down there in the yard somewhere. That's where all the cases originated. And how many others has he got to? Come on, man. About half an hour ago, you say. About that? Could have been longer. You know where he goes from here? No idea. What do you want? He's not in any trouble, but it's in the public interest that we find him, all right? What's the trouble, Fred? These guys are looking for any brown. In the public interest. <laughs> What's he been doing, selling raffle tickets? Did you see him leave? Sure, he went east along Mill. You know where we can find him? What's he been up to? Did you buy anything from him? Cigarettes. No law against that, is it? Did you? Coffee. No sugar, please. Did anyone else work here? No. No. Just uh, me and him. Hey, Sergeant! Why don't you get Batman on the job? <laughs> Beautiful, eh? 
get any idea where we might find them, give us a call, okay? You can bet on it. <laughs> you can bet on it. Yeah. You know what they want him for, don't you? Someone's calling me selling beer on the side. What time do you got? Call cancer. You'll be there now. Okay, keep trying. And you better send someone to check out his home. May have eaten one of those sandwiches himself. I'll be here. Now check out his home. He probably went back to refill his coffee. And that transport driver's been located. Eastern County Hospital. Same symptoms as the others. You're up to four. Byron, you better uh, give the inspector a subpoena now. They're holding an inquest on the old man next week. Did you find anything about him? Name's Anton Greger. Lived mostly at the Salvation Army. Family in the city, quite affluent apparently, but uh, he liked his freedom. They wanted to put him in a nursing home, so he left. Nothing? Not yet. Seems to have disappeared entirely. Well, what about an announcement on the radio? Rod, have every crank in town calling in? Couldn't take long. I mean, we know his route now. So with all the resources of today, we we're unable to find a blue coffee truck. He was here just a little while ago. Picked up four dozen butter tarts. I don't know where he is now. Well, what time does he finish? Oh, that's hard to say. It all depends if any of the sites are on overtime. Sometimes he goes to his brother's before he comes home. Where's that? Um, Military Road near Duke City. It's a farm. Are they on the phone? I think so, but I haven't any idea of the number. Well, you'll phone us if he calls back, will you? I do hope he isn't in any kind of trouble. Is Carter doing the confirmation tests? We should have a report by Monday. Dr. Eugene Carter, this hospital. Did you call Arnie? Before I left, he said, take it easy. He said, what? Charles. Yeah? No, she didn't. OK, keep trying. Has Locke called in yet? OK. Still no sign of him. Well, he can't just disappear. The man's a killer. I'm going down there. It's better than sitting here, right? Which, what's that license plate number? 636. 366. No, 636. All right. mentioned your lack of discretion before, but this last effort of yours is totally irresponsible. What are you talking about? A man named Lowther. Henry Lowther? Yes, he phoned the World Post and told them I was trying to hush up this food poisoning scare you've started. <laughs> Henry did that, eh? Oh, come on, doctor. The role of innocence doesn't suit you. Are you trying to say that I put him up to that? Exactly. I think it's all a part of the smear campaign that you and the Post are waging against the Department of Public Health. You're out of your mind. Well, I'm reporting your conduct to the Medical Association anyway. You finished? Slander, statements to the press, hysterical outbursts, and all because of an odd case of staff. I think there's one thing you should know. That odd case of staff is dead. Okay. And there are three more people seriously ill. The lab calls it botulism. Home games.
You seen Ernie Brown, the coffee vendor? You fellas seen Ernie Brown, the coffee vendor? No. No. Ernie coming up today? Should be. He can run the smoke stuff down for us. I mean, he doesn't work Saturdays. You can ask him. Now make sure Mrs. Poljak's mother goes straight to bed when you get home. Fellow down there in the plaid shirt. I don't know. He came in with the third case, Mr. Dryden. Thank you. Uh, you waiting for someone? Yeah, yeah. My pal, Georgie. He had a terrible pain in the stomach. Uh, Dryden, Georgie Dryden. You and me and him are going out on a job tomorrow. I'm sorry. Mr. Dryden died. What? Huh? Just a few minutes ago. I'm sorry, I didn't know anyone was waiting for him. That's okay. Lord, he's dead. It was food poisoning. You don't know what he's eaten. Some sandwiches, that's all. He offered me some, but uh, I wasn't hungry. Did he get it from a coffee truck? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what he said, yeah. You see, I wasn't with him then. Dead. You don't know his next of kin, someone we could notify. Oh, no, no, no. We used to just have a few beers together, you know. I mean, I didn't know him all that well. But I'll tell the people around, see if they know anyone, huh? We interrupt this program to bring you a police message. Metro police are anxious to contact the driver of a blue 1962 coffee truck, Metro license number 636. Anyone having information as to the present whereabouts of this vehicle is asked to contact Metro Police. At 871-1111. That number again is 636. A blue coffee truck with the name Ernie Brown. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of this truck should phone the police department immediately. <laughs> Sergeant? He's been reported at pier number 35. We're on our way there now. I'll follow you. Highway 47, very big. 
busy. Right now, Jerry, we're passing over one of those farms you said you'd like to retire on, and it sure looks nice down there. We'll head over east now, check the traffic in that area, and we'll be back in about five minutes. Thanks, Bob. The police have now confirmed an earlier report that three people died today in Central Hospital. A fourth victim, a transport driver, is safe yeah. without the critical list. That's smell. Good for him. Means you're signing it. In our regular use, one half hour from now. Looks like we got here just in time. The guy with the white hair, the medical health officer. Let me guess which one is Carl Brown. Just give him the summons. Carl Brown? Yes, sir. Sergeant Byron James of the coroner's office. I have a subpoena here for you to attend an inquest. That's what we're here to find out. 